Good afternoon. Today I will be presenting to you the background of Cornelius Vanderbilt. He is an American business magnet and also one of the wealthiest people in America. I will be teaching you about his diehard passion for making money as well as his gifts to the business world. Vanderbilt, the son of a farmer and boatman, quit school at age 11 to work on the waterfront for his father. With money borrowed from his parents, he purchased his first boat in 1810. The boat served as transport between Staten Island and New York City. During the War of 1812, he expanded his operations to a small fleet, which he then supplied government outposts throughout the city. Vanderbilt continued to expand the ferry operation until 1818, when he sold all of his ships and went to work winters on a steamboat to accumulate money for his next plan, but also gain knowledge. On the boat, he gained much insight onto how he would further use his knowledge to create his own steamship company in 1829. During this decade, Vanderbilt quickly rose to control the traffic on the Hudson River by providing cheaper fares and more luxurious ferries for people to use. He quickly took over the ferry market with the idea of cheaper ticket prices for a better ride across the river. Finally, after running the Hudson for almost a full decade, his competitors paid him off to move his business somewhere else. He was too good. A year after this, Vanderbilt founded his company to transport people and goods from New Orleans to San Francisco, which at the time was a big success because of the gold rush and people needing to move across the West Coast. <sighs> Once again, Va Vanderbilt was too good for his competitors, okay? Um... His competitors all teamed up and said that they would pay him $56,000 a month for him to just stop so they could get their customers back. And he did, which isn't a bad, it's a good turnaround. After this, Vanderbilt decided to get into the railway industry. Once Vanderbilt had found out about train transportation, he knew that there was good money that he could make in it. So Vanderbilt started buying up pieces of the rail line and sooner or later he owned the whole thing so this allowed him to make whatever rules he wanted whatever taxes he wanted and he could charge people to use it for however much he wanted and this gave him like too much power not too much but a lot of power in today's not today's but back then's economy you know after much research and deep diving into the background of Cornelius Vanderbilt I believe he is an entrepreneur that should be studied in school not because of his selfishness in the business world, but Cornelius Vanderbilt possessed many good habits that elevated him above his peers. For example, he could scope out the new industries that were arising and find the best ways to profit from them. Something that many other businessmen can follow behind is the way that he went through with these strategies. For example, when he started his steamboat business, Vanderbilt lowered fares and offered better luxury than other ferries. Sounds costly, right? Well, it was. Vanderbilt knew that in the short run he would quickly make his money back, and that is why he knew that it'd be worth it to lose money for a little bit. The accommodations his boat offered led the city and its people to use Vanderbilt services because of how cheap and nice everything was to the consumer. Cheap and nice doesn't always work, but in this case, Vanderbilt assured that his ferries would be cleaner, nicer than any other ferry brand. But also giving customers more for less was a great way for people to see this business and for it to gain traction on the Hudson River. Not only was Vanderbilt good at being a businessman, but he was also a very generous person. After making his money and finally retiring to live the rest of his life, which only happened to be eight short years, he donated millions of dollars to schools, charities, grants, construction projects, the list goes on. Although many people believed him to be a selfish tyrant with no one's well-being in mind, he proved them wrong by choosing to be a philanthropist and giving back to the communities that helped him get where he was. Not only did he help people with money, but he helped them get jobs as well. Vanderbilt ordered the construction of Grand Central Depot, which later turned into Grand Central Terminal, in New York City, a project that gave jobs to thousands and thousands of people who had become unemployed during the panic of 1873 when we were going through much economic distress. This action brought much love to Vanderbilt, but did not overpower the jealousy that so many other businessmen had over his power and wealth. 
Shortly after donating money to schools and construction funds, Vanderbilt passed away at the age of 82 years old, leaving his wealth to his four sons, six daughters, and one wife. Splitting the land he owned between them all, not fairly, the son had received quite a hefty amount of land rather than the wife who only received 10% of his portion of land, I believe. Um, overall, I believe Vanderbilt should be studied for his amazing entrepreneurship strategies that helped people today and all throughout history since he was the man he was to create businesses, make money, learn how to make profits, and the list goes on. Also, his help in spreading the railroad across the West Coast was a massive help to manifest destiny and Western expansion, which is a key part of America's history. Not only did he speed up the expansion of America, but he created so many stepping stones for people to build off of. For example, for example, creating the Grand Central Terminal, otherwise known as the Grand Central Depot, influenced cities and businessmen throughout the United States to begin creating more and more train stations and larger transportation stops to take more people, more trains, and lower the cost of, cost of travel cost of time, all this stuff. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg for the contributions that Vanderbilt made to America, and I hope this clearly explains to you guys his relevancy to our education and also our importance to American history and the business in America. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope this really helped you see the important aspects of Vanderbilt's life on our education.